Welcome back into the Sports Source. This segment brought to you by Southeast Termite and Pest Control. Ah, summer. Mosquitoes, <laughs> carpenter bees, termites, bugs getting into your home. Wonderful. Well, look, you can stop all those critters with a single call. Holler at my friend Matthew Haynes and his team at Southeast Termite and Pest Control. That's who I use. East Tennessee's biggest and best locally owned pest control company. They've been doing it since 1971. Southeast, southeasttermite.com is where you go to learn more. I can't say enough good things about them. You work with them, you'll love them. Southeast Termite and Pest Control. Okay, as I mentioned going to break, Greg Sankey wasn't happy that he'd worked for a year on this plan for a 12-team playoff. And then he gets Oklahoma and Texas into the league. All these other leagues get mad and so he's been dealing in bad faith. We're not going to do anything with your playoff. Yeah. We're going to keep it as is. So it has leaked out from the SEC <laughs> that they could just do their own playoff. We'll do what we want. It's probably a leverage play at this point, but at the same time, there is some discussion that the SEC could start their own SEC-only playoff, that you expand a little bit more, get some more teams in here. So let's just look at this. So I had a little, don't worry about, well, how would they leave that league with their media rights tied up through 2030? Don't <laughs> worry about it. <laughs> uh, we're just playing here, but if they're going to go expand further and do their own playoff, what would it look like? So let's do a little more expansion. Look at this. Here's dream scenario, all right? You add four teams. You add Clemson, Florida State, North Carolina, and Virginia Tech. So now you get two more states. You get the biggest brands from the ACC, and look how you can divide it up. The five teams who were all in the Southwest Conference or the Big Eight, they go into the Southwest Division. The 10 original SEC teams, why, they're in your West and East divisions. And the five teams that at one point were in the ACC, including South Carolina, well, they're in the Atlantic division. My goodness, it's perfect. <laughs> yeah, it's perfect. It's clean. It's clean. Yeah. It's neat. Yeah. It's perfect. And then imagine you took that, and I based this, one, to make Tennessee fans happy, but also I based it off all-time winning percentage. Okay, now you could have done it on projections for this year. I could have done it off last year's standings. But let's look all-time winning percentage. What would a playoff in this format look like? Let's see. You play that season, and then the eight teams get in. So you've got the number two team in the West, LSU, goes to the number one team in the Southwest, Oklahoma. You've got the number two team in the Southwest, Texas, goes to the number one team in the West, Alabama. Number two in the East, Georgia, at number one in the Atlantic, Clemson. Number two in the Atlantic, Florida State, at number one in the East, Tennessee. Your semifinals would be Oklahoma and Alabama, Clemson and Tennessee, your title game, Alabama and Tennessee. Now, I know that that's very, very regional, but it's a pretty big region, and it's also yep. the region that watches college football exactly. more than any other region. Yep. I got to say, I don't know that I would do this. It wouldn't be my goal, but you'd make a lot of money, so much money, <laughs> incredible amounts of money if you expanded Add, and by the way, those brands you're talking about, you're adding three of the top, three more of the top 15 brands in the country. Mm -hmm. So you'd have 15 of the top 25 brands in America in one conference. But with those playoffs, LSU at Oklahoma, Texas at Alabama, Georgia at Clemson, Florida State at Tennessee, can, assuming all those are based on the historical right. goodness, that would be a pretty good playoff. I mean, you're not really missing many, many teams out there. So my question, though, that's a huge leap. And again, I don't think they're going to do it. But would you support something like this or would you hate something like this? Chuck? Well, I tell you what, I, it's certainly intriguing to look at, especially, you know, adding it like a Florida State, Clemson and that. But it would be difficult for me to support just because then you've got this whole rigmarole split national champions. Who's your best college football team? And it's almost like, and, and, and don't you think, though, you go through that. If you, uh, if you go you through that, you certainly stay. Yeah, and, and we're not seeing the, the – Ohio State. Yeah. <laughs> Some of the other teams get blown out in the BCS Final Four, right? I mean, those are the ones. Ohio State is the only – you know, you're, you're going to be missing the chance to maybe match up with them. But, but I, I, I see it. If you absolutely had to, you would. But I, I would not really support it unless that was like your last well, resort. Well, let me give you the caveat. We, I didn't think we'd need to go into there, but we are. Uh, that's the first place you went. There's talk, though, that – you then play your championship, and then like the old Super Bowl, which was AFL mm -hmm. versus NFL, if, if yeah. whoever wins whatever's else out there right. wants to play in Miami, 
after all this? Fine, we'll play a title game, winner take all, in Miami. So let's say that's part of it, because that's been discussed too, that eventually you play your thing, and then Big Ten and Pac-12 and everybody does their thing. Would that change your view if you did get everybody? If you had a chance to settle it on the field, who was the best college football team in the country? Yes, I would. I would at least be more inclined to look at that. Okay. And I do like some. I do but, like some of what you got up. But there. you're well. It's not. Again, yeah. this is not just me. This is right. what's being talked about out there. Right. This, I don't think it's going to happen. But basically, either. what we're asking is, would you support an NFL type structure for the SEC, Vince? I, I wouldn't like it. I, it would be better if your your champion played the the rest of the champion. But to me, it's still not the true champion of everybody. It's two playoffs, and then you come together in separate leagues. It, I, I just I, it would be intriguing. I would watch it if it was on my TV <laughs> with those matchups, no doubt. But I, it to me, it's not the best of everybody. It's the best of our group, and then you know whoever else you get matched up with. Bob. I think it would work because right now the rest of those groups just aren't worth a dang except for, like you said, Ohio State. I mean, if, if, you're, if it came together the way you said, how many name brand schools are not included in the SEC? USC, Ohio State, Michigan. Michigan UCLA. It's a, very, it's a very narrow group that's not included in this. And, and so I would, I, would, I would probably go for something like that if you had a national championship. Because in college football with 130-some-odd Division One team, are you really ever truly crowning a national champion? I mean, yeah, Georgia was the best team last year. But you can go back some other years, a lot of years, and say it wasn't. So, so I, don't, I don't have any problem with doing it that way. But here's the thing. Even last year, was Georgia the best team? Split with Alabama. Was in the second half. <laughs> so, I mean, um, your thoughts on? Let's let me turn it. Let me make you the. Um, let's say you're just the SEC. You're in, you're all three presidents of SEC schools, and you're looking at it strictly from a monetary standpoint. That makes a lot of money, a ton of money. Would you do it then? I mean, you, you, you're you're okay with it, so I'm I'm gonna have to see if these guys. Yeah, from a from a business standpoint, sure, because you have you have the network already. Everything is is right in that one place, so it would be easy to execute from a TV standpoint. Um, but college football hasn't always done everything that makes the most money, right? <laughs> I mean, in the last twenty years, they have. <laughs> well, twelve team playoff would make a lot more money. They haven't done that, or even at eight. That's true. That's play. true. But yeah. that's that's a little out of spite. They were going to do it until. Right. He's, but, okay. but it took him forever. Something blew I tell you what, it gives Greg Sankey a really good plan B, doesn't it? I mean, you guys are either going to negotiate in good faith, or here's what we right. can do, and we can make it work, and we can get rich doing it this way. Here, the the extra teams, though, that's the only way I could see them pulling that off. Like that's that's a lot of ifs. And you said, well, we're not thinking about the contracts and stuff, but that's a lot. Oh of yeah, it's just it's hypothetical. But, <laughs> yeah, but, but I'm, I'm saying for them to legitimately have that as a threat, you have to be able to add more teams well, to it and execute rather than just the 16. Well, yeah, you could just go to a four-team playoff if you went to 16. And right. you could still stay in the current. You can then go to a national playoff, but yeah. you added, what would that be, two more semifinals? I mean, you'd be yeah. adding two semifinals right. games, so you'd make a little bit more money that way. Um, I don't know. It's interesting. There, I'm just finding it fascinating. Uh, I, I think that gives the SEC a good stick. Yeah. To, to get the, some the, negotiations to be able in to good sit faith there and, and say, look, you can play ball with us, or we can take our ball and go home. Right. So I mean, you know, because yeah, I would watch that. Yeah, I would too. It's kind of what um, nobody cared, but the English Premier League did this, mm -hmm. and it's what they tried to do with the European, where they just said, okay, we're the best of these, so let's just form our own league. You're seeing more of this. Now, that the television dollars have changed everything because you're right, college football hasn't always done what was the most money. But over the last 20 years, that's kind of changed. I would say over the last 10 years, that's, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, it used to be, well, we need to get in our footprint, expand the footprint. Now it's just money. It's, just, it's all about money. And I, I don't know that anything else matters. Power. Well, those they come those hand in hand. Yeah, they go yeah. hand in hand. So. Yeah. All right, uh, when we come back, Oklahoma and Texas are entering the league in 2025. One thing we haven't discussed on here, who's going to be hurt by that? Which SEC schools are going to be hurt the most by adding two more brands? Mm -hmm. One of them at the top of football right now. We'll see if they stay there. 
one of them traditionally a football power, but they've been like Tennessee, not as down as Tennessee, but certainly nowhere near their heights over the last 20 years. Uh, let's discuss who gets hurt in the SEC when Texas and Oklahoma arrive. Come on back on the Sports Source.